H. Spencer Lewis accorded special importance to the matter of fraternity, and had a keen awareness of the equality of men and women, whatever their backgrounds may be. On numerous occasions, he expressed himself on this point in his writings. In 1929, in *The Mastery of Life*, a booklet providing information concerning Amorc, he emphasized that racial superiority did not exist. In his book *Mansions of the Soul*, published in 1930, dealing with the origins of and the nature of the soul, he stated. It may be mentioned that this ancient understanding of the association of all egos with each other, and the uniting of all souls into one soul, establishes the fact that all human beings are brothers and sisters under one Creator, and of the same essence, same vitality, and same consciousness, regardless of race, creed, color, or other distinctive elements of the ego. Although busy directing the activities of Amorc, H. Spencer Lewis continued to maintain relations with other individuals in the world of esotericism. In the years preceding World War II, great confusion reigned in the realm of esoteric organizations. Certain people were worried, particularly those who were part of the Rosicrucian movements created in Belgium by Emile Dantin. The Order of the Rose Croix Universitaire, founded in 1923, and the OHTM, instituted in 1927. Following the advice of Franz Wittmann, Jean Malinger, a close associate of Emile Dantin, wrote the following to H. Spencer Lewis on January 11, 1933: "We will be very honored to affiliate ourselves with the eminent Rosicrucian Order." Of which you are the chief and guide, we will be very happy to be able to collaborate in Amorc's activities. H. Spencer Lewis welcomed the petition of the European Rosicrucians favorably. In August 1934, he traveled to Brussels so as to participate in the creation of the Fudosi, a federation meant to bring together authentic initiatic orders. He became one of the three directors of this worldwide organization. He also used this occasion to renew ties with the Martinist tradition. During this first congress of the Fudosi, Victor Blanchard, director of the Ordre Martinis et Synarchique, conferred on him the initiations and authority necessary for the establishment of Martinism in the United States. During his travels to Europe, H. Spencer Lewis had the opportunity to visit the planetarium at the Deutsches Museum in Munich. On his return to San Jose, he devoted all his energy to drawing up plans and creating the first planetarium projector put together by an American. In July 1936, the Moorish-style building constructed for housing this projector was inaugurated. This audacious creation was a testimony to the genius of the first imperator of Amorc. H. Spencer Lewis was a humanist and was a member of numerous philanthropic societies and associations. Despite his constant activities and numerous travels that he carried out in serving Amorc, he still found the time to devote himself to writing. In 1936, he published. The Symbolic Prophecy of the Great Pyramid, a book that brought forth the mysterious knowledge of the Egyptians. In the following year, he published two more books. In the first, The Secret Doctrines of Jesus, he returned to ideas that he had discussed in a previous work. In the second, Mental Poisoning, he denounced the detrimental effects of negative suggestions and superstitious beliefs. He showed how the laws associated with the activities of the subconscious condition our life, and he proposed keys allowing us to not only liberate ourselves from all forms of mental poisoning, but also to use suggestion in a constructive way.
Shortly after his return from his European travels, where he had participated in the Fudosi Congress that brought together Rosicrucian leaders from all around the world, H. Spencer Lewis's health went into a decline. Perhaps he had overtaxed himself while serving others for too many years and thus began to pay the price. As is true of all extraordinary individuals, he was naturally criticized and slandered, but he always worked with ardor and conviction in serving his ideal. He passed through transition on August 2, 1939, being only 56 years old. Thus disappeared the individual who, following a long quest, had attempted to give a fresh momentum to Rosicrucianism by way of the ancient and mystical order Rosae Crucis. That is why, without falling into the cult of personality, which is contrary to Rosicrucian ethics, the members and present leaders of Amork recognize him for the work he accomplished. Although Harvey Spencer Lewis gave Amork a special touch, it must be emphasized nonetheless that the order has evolved considerably since that time. In fact, this worldwide initiatic and philosophical movement has never ceased to perfect itself due to the research and work of its directors and members. In keeping with the wishes of its restorer, the teachings themselves have been constantly enriched and updated so as to be always adapted to the evolution of consciousness, knowledge, and society. Nearly a century after its resurgence, the Rosicrucian Order remains faithful to the spirit of Harvey Spencer Lewis by bringing together men and women without regard to race, social class, or religion in a spirit of humanism, fraternity, and spirituality. It thus constitutes in our era one of the most dynamic and most innovative esoteric movements. <laughs>